the acts of 2022, I announce that this meeting of the select board is being recorded by Hadley Media, the select board's office via Zoom, and ask if there's anybody present who is also recording this meeting. Let the minutes reflect that no one else has indicated that they are recording this meeting. All right, let's start with public comments. Public comments, Alex? I think Jamie got to get close to these microphones in order to get them to work. Hello, everyone. Alex Marsh, uh, Thank you. I don't think that your microphone is going. I don't know if any of the microphones are going through the room. No. But I don't think so. Alex, regarding the survey, yeah. I happened to see it today. And when I saw it, I thought, charter survey, the town's going to get a charter. So make it charter spectrum or something like that, or charter cable, cable so that okay. people know what it is. Please. Okay. Okay, All right, now you got to figure out how the original, the microphones aren't working. <laughs> Well, let's continue on while he tries to fix that. Otherwise, we're going to be Except here all that night. That mic isn't working, and we're in public comment, so we will hear. Sue, public comment? I thought I was on the agenda. Yeah, she's on the oh, you're on the agenda. Seat. Judy, public comment? No, I want to go back to you, Sue. No. <laughs> public comment is public comment. Sue has a different. Okay. Yes, at the microphone, please. The microphone, that doesn't work. Well, well. Go with it. <laughs> Hello, Alex. How are you? Okay. We're good. Go. Put it right next to you. <laughs> okay, here. Um, so, I'm so just going to be brief. At the January 31st, 31st board meeting, there was an unprovoked attack on an elderly board member at the Captain Board meeting. It was an embarrassment to the Hadley community. This person is the person committing this verbal attack. Um, is not a representative of the Golden Department. It's an embarrassment. I was embarrassed. It was un unnecessary. It was vicious. Verbal attack on the by the clinic board representative. The only thing I would like to mention is that last weekend there was a very sad event in the Belcher Town Housing Authority, which is also managed by parents. The tenant that had been given a, um, an eviction notice and a trespass order and told he would be evicted by the police, left his dog in his apartment, went bobbing and committed suicide. This is the second suicide attempt in public housing in the last three years. Something is very, very wrong. It has scared tenants. There's three in our community of 40 apartments, maybe more because I don't know about the family unit. Um, I just think that the select board members need to know that this is going on over there. Thank you. Thank you. Any other public comments?
Seeing none, we'll move on to the consent agenda. On the consent agenda, we have warrants AP2331, AP2331 INS, AP2331V, AP2331S, PR2315, PR2316. Cancellation of Certificate of Flammable Fluids, Triangle Properties, LLC at 13 Russell Street. Letter of Resignation from Stevie Gatto, Hadley Media Production Assistant. Contract Approval, Town Treasurer and Financial Manager, Linda Sanderson. DPW Laborer Truck Driver Hire Full-Time, Theodore Casey. Hadley Media Production Assistant Hire Part-Time, Abigail Morton. Council on Aging Committee Member Appointment, Sarah Chadwick. Class two auto dealers license, ZG Motors. ZG, Any questions? ZG Motors. ZG Motors. Motion to approve the consent agenda. Second. Motion by Joyce, second by Molly. Roll call vote, please. Roll call vote, Chungalo? Yes. Keegan? Yes. Nevin Smith? Yes. Parsons? Yes. Iser? Yes. Thank you. All right. Um, Jennifer is unable to be here tonight and asked to be put on the March 1st agenda for the early voting opt out or opt in. Jennifer? Jessica. Jessica, I'm sorry. I was looking at Jennifer. I mean, who's Jennifer? <laughs> <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> I got so excited. Okay. <laughs> Subcommittee updates. These committees were appointed by select board and I've asked Jessica, our town clerk, to give me all the information that she could find regarding these in terms of whether we have a um, mission statement with them or if not a mission statement, any information, mostly what that is, um, is when they were actually formed. So what I'd like to do is to sort of go through this one by one and see if we have any questions or comments or reason to discuss the specific committee further. All right, so Agricultural Commission. We do have a mission statement for that. This was the October uh, 28th, special town meeting in 2004 that this was approved to have an agricultural commission. And we do have a, as I say, mission statement for that. The cemetery committee, this I find fascinating, was voted in at the annual town meeting of 1928. <laughs> it's been around a long time. We should plan a birthday party for them. Okay, um, conservation commission, was established in February meeting of 1960. The Council on Aging was adopted in the town meeting February 14th, 1970. That's the board of directors. The Cultural Council um, was established in 1958. We don't have any information about the Hadley Media. Hadley Historical Commission was established March 18th, 1976. Jane, if I can just, the Hadley Media. Yes. I think I've noticed, changed its name a couple of times, but Hadley Media Advisory. Um, I can probably go back and pinpoint when that was created. Okay, that okay. would be good. Thank you. Uh, Historical Commission. I just did that right. Yeah. Um, okay. The Municipal Building Commission a Committee um, was um, established in February of 2014, but I do not have a mission statement for them. The Shade Tree Committee was established. I have no information about Shade Tree. No, Ambulance oversight, uh -huh. no information except in 2018. Uh, the Climate Change Committee and the Housing and Economic Development Committee were established in March of 2020. The Commission, 
Committee for Diversion, Equity and Inclusion was in August of 2020. The Mosquito Opt-Out Committee was November 2021. Um, the Community Preservation Act Committee has a mission statement and that was uh, 2008. The bylaw committee, recent 12 of 21. The river bylaw committee, no mission statement, but was 22 of 21. The DPW facilities committee is 10 22. The Russell School Building Committee was established in 10-2019 as an ad hoc committee. The Capital Planning Commission was established in 2006 at a town meeting, and there is a mission statement. The Disability Commission has a mission statement from the state, but is not anything we currently have active. The Senior Center Building Committee and the North Hadley Building, North Hadley Fire Station Building Committee were both established in 2016. Are there any comments or questions? Well, so for the ones that don't have like formal mission statements, like I know the ambulance oversight, I mean, we <clears throat> there was discussion when that was formed. Um, and same thing with the Housing and Economic Development Committee. So because I happen to be chair on both of those committees, I'm happy to go back through the records and make sure, you know, that right. something's put together and brought to the board if we never actually approved it. And I would think, Jane, I mean, same thing with any of the other committees, whoever the board member is, maybe they could take the lead on making sure right. that there's a mission statement. Um, I think the only one I've got a question on yeah, well, I, I know like Hadley Media um, dissolved and we had talked about <clears throat> bringing that one back online, but the other one is the Municipal Building Committee. So that was formed in 2014 because we didn't, we were planning on all of the, the buildings. So since 2014, three brand new buildings. And it was also formed because of the North Hadley Village Hall to see how we could sell it and, exactly. and uh, disperse a bit one way or another. Yeah. And we didn't really have, um, you know, like not, not like this problem's been resolved, but there are some staffing concerns and issues about bandwidth um, and how we were going to handle that going forward. And so bandwidth um, bandwidth in terms of the, like we were talking about the DPW, like who was really in charge of all oh. the building maintenance, right? And Gary, you know, Gary's yeah. Gary's it. Yeah. Um, so since then, uh, I know when when Marla Warner was DPW director, we talked about the oversight of the buildings being folded back under DPW like it is in other municipalities, but not now, right? Because again, there was so much going on then. Mm -hmm. So I guess I'm just wondering, are we at a point now that the only really, I mean, we've got town hall, um, obviously, you know, there's still some maintenance issues there. And then the good one, there's been a lot of conversation and we're in the middle of that, but should that now, should we look at the budget process about pulling that back into the DPW rather than having a committee oversight structure? I mean, it just seems like we're at that point now. Well, the other thing is that the mission statement of capital planning basically is what the municipal building committee is now doing, I think. So we really have two committees. Let me read you this. So the board of selectmen shall establish and appoint a committee known as the capital planning committee, uh, the makeup of the committee. Section two, the committee shall study proposed capital projects and public improvements involved in, involving major non-recurring tangible assets and projects which one, involve acquisition, demolition, repair, or non-routine modifications to public buildings. Two, involve acquisition or sale of land. Three, involve acquisition of equipment with a value of $25,000 or more. Or four, involve design studies, engineering studies, or other studies related to capital expenditures. I think 
that that's sort of saying they're looking at all the buildings and the status of them for the long-term capital plan, if I'm reading this correctly. Mm -hmm. So. I mean, they've done a lot of, you know, they've done a lot of good, again, 2014, that was eight, nine years ago at this point. So there was a lot of really good work that the committee did. Um, oh, absolutely. So I'm just wondering if, do we want to invite them in to see if they feel that there's still things that require a committee or or can, you know, now it fold under Scott and Gary Berg in terms of ongoing maintenance, coming up with the maintenance. Well, is that, where, is that where um, uh, Tim Neihart and them come in when they're giving us direction on the Goodwin? Isn't that the build, municipal building committee that's doing that? The and, municipal and sending us doing that, but isn't that something in capital planning's mission statement? Well, I, I think it's under the direction of that that municipal building committee has taken a hold of and whether or not that's now their job or not, I guess that's up for discussion, whether or not yes. it's it's their purview or are we giving it back to the capital? Right. Right. Between and capital and take? DPW. Correct. Well, so I think that would that, be yeah, the knowledge base on that committee is very helpful, I believe. To, some of it to, yes yeah to, to provide information at least so maybe we need to invite municipal building and capital planning to come and discuss how they I, see their roles in town so the capital planning really is during the budget cycle and looking at what's in the upcoming budget and there is a working group that i'm working with to do the long-term um, capital planning so that is taking place, looking at all the capital needs and which include larger maintenance items, infrastructure, infrastructure repair and all of that. Um, so I think it would, it may be helpful for the select board to have some clarification, um, especially with there is a request for some items from that committee to go on to the, um, the warrant, for the annual town meeting. But most of what they've asked in one of those articles is, has been put into the operating budget of building maintenance. So there's a duplication. Um, and so I think there needs to be some clarification of, the, of what the role is of that committee. Um, and then what the role of is really falls under building maintenance. It's just, you know, we're gonna be building up strength in that department in the next couple of years, which I think is what Hadley needs. But I agree with Randy, there is some valuable input there. Um, it's just, I think th there needs to be some clarification. So I is the way to do that to put the players in the same room and have a conversation with them. Well, I think I think we we need to give some direction to the municipal building committee because I think they're going outside of their scope right now um, on some of the things that they're doing and in spending money and doing things of that nature that we I I don't think is under their purview to do that. I I think that you know we need to bring that back in. I think most of our committee is my understanding of what I've looked at here most of the committees we've appointed are fact finding not money spending well you're, you're paying an architect on the municipal building committee um, every time he does something he gets paid you're talking about the architect that they, they Hired, contracted Larry Larry yes. yes so I mean I think they're it's out of money as I understand well he's out of money I'm just wondering what they're Again, their purview is is to come back and where they're going with it now, and what do they foresee him being needed for at this point, and what what we feel he's needed for at this point. I think we need a clarification on that. So, yeah. so I think it makes sense to get him in here. Yeah. Okay. And, and, and talk. Yeah, and get an update, and then and maybe it it's a matter of narrowing. I mean, if the we think the committee should should still exist, then I meant like Joyce is saying, making it really clear what the scope is remaining and then also when we no longer are going to need one you know mm -hmm. and just some process clarification as exactly. as because now you've request. taken them out of the whole picture of what the municipal building were about that you now have formed another committee to do russell school whereas it's a municipal building it was under the previous purview of that municipal building committee so now you got those involved in the Russell School well, where they we were should. supposed to be involved with the Russell School. So 
where does it go? Who, who's, whose is it? Maybe they both come in. Well, now you're going to get three of them coming in, capital, Russell, and municipal. Well, two capital planning committee members are sitting yeah, I, I, I think I think clap capital is pretty clear cut because it's in the bylaws and that really is for um, for this capital planning committee, they've been focusing on the requests that come in during the week, and that working group that work that I'm working with is doing the long term planning, I, I think. All right, the then leave them out community. of it and just bring Russell and municipal in. We've mm -hmm. got two working on the same areas of yeah. work. So I, I think it's almost processes that need to get clarified as well as roles, because right now with those two requests coming in, they haven't been a part of the capital plan. So what are we going to bump now? Right. So that's where I think this is a crucial time to get some clarification on what the building maintenance is. Um, and really, it should be building facility maintenance, yeah. is that that department is in charge of, of facilities in the town. And again, it's a long-term plan to work towards getting that's that fine. Team. Bring them in. Okay. <laughs> so you want that, Russell uh, School bring them in. and and municipal school. building committee at the next meeting. Your meeting. I'm not. Um, here. Not I don't care. Next. They want to come in. They March first. first. March first. <clears throat> or, do we, the other question is, do we want to do anything about the two, quote, vacant committees, the Hadley Media Advisory and the Disability Commission? Should we, um, I mean, in the past, we've always had Hadley Media put something out saying that we're looking for volunteers. Um, Carolyn, is there someone independent of a Hadley Media Committee looking at the contract renewal? Uh, just uh, right now, Alex is doing most of the research and checking in with me. Because the... I think that's where we, our contract renewal is every 10 years and that's coming up in. Oh, yeah, we but we tried we tried twice to get a committee together. Well, and what I'm saying is that maybe those two committees, should, that committee, the charter. A, we didn't get a committee. We didn't the, get the nobody volunteered. I sent an update. Um, I think it was probably late spring mm -hmm. to get volunteers because we were we were late in the game. And I think I probably got three people that were interested yeah, in and that. Yeah, some of the people who were on it before have moved out of town. Yeah. So, so that no we didn't have a choice. Them. Alex had to move forward. Oh, yeah, us. absolutely. Yeah. He has to so move I, forward, I, but can we give him some help somehow by bringing in somebody? I don't know. I'm just... I know. It's a, I don't know. A, a question I'm putting I think out that's what, why he's been coming to here to get some oversight with the questionnaire, which was really helpful. Yeah. I think if he can just continue to... He and I can meet and then know when it's time to come before you to update you on what's the next step. Because there will be um, another, I'm sure, another outreach um, okay. opportunity. Okay. And then the only other thing I'd add with this is, you know, maybe, obviously, we don't want to have all of these committees coming in with any degree of frequency, but it would be nice to know, like, have some sort of a an update that every committee asks for an audience with the board or, or vice versa, like twice a year or something. Yeah, I mean. Or if they have a liaison, the liaison could speak one of us. Mm -hmm. Yep. Mm -hmm. I can, the I can. Commission, do they, do they have a um, mission statement? Who? The Disability Commission. I can answer that. I think that one's state law, isn't it? It, it, it is a state law and the town had two members, which was not enough to have a quorum for a really long time. And the two members emailed me when I was doing renewals one year and said, please stop, we're not doing this anymore. So there's nobody's on it, but it is the Disability Commission is put forth by the Commonwealth of what the requirements are. And if we had one, y'all could apply for grants. Yeah, because I was just thinking about, you know, how how they just became, you know, age and dementia friendly if if anyone, you know, there because that is a disability, if anyone there would be interested in being on that committee. It's a good thought. That is an excellent thought. I also think I know there's some people in town who have um what are labeled disabilities, motility, mobility skills, visual skills, auditory skills. Um mm -hmm. and I think that we should try and have people who have specific needs who can actually say, well, you know, it, this building doesn't work for me because I get in and I can't hear anybody or the light isn't bright enough or whatever the need is. 
And somebody who has a, a problem is who we really have to hear that from, not from somebody who is functioning. Yeah, to be on that actually you're supposed to be living with a disability. But also just a reminder, um, Pioneer Valley Planning Commission is also doing an ADA accessibility study on the town. Good. That will be happening. So that, that will open up a lot of insight, but. That will open up insight. But um, if we have a committee, I believe it opens us up to get grants for. It's, yes, it does. You can't apply, especially and like I the, think the um, elevator that may happen at Goodwin. Um, in order to get a to write a grant just for that, you have to have that commission. Does so? We should contact the Age and Dementia Friendly Group and see if anyone's interested. Yeah, we should and put it out. We did for the uh, the DPW committee as well. And we sh and we should put it out to the public that if there is anyone who would like to serve on that committee who has yeah. a disability, we would really appreciate it. Yeah. So you can petition the Hadley Media to put that on there. Should okay. it go on the, the town website as mm -hmm. well? And put it on the town website. Oops for me. Okay, let's move it along. All right. Anything else on our committees? All right, moving on to the town administrators, 360 review and select board evaluations. Jen, do you want to come up? And you have this, you're going to share screen. She got fancy. I am. Can you, can you see me? Can you make that up in a way and go to slide view? I, I did on mine. For some reason, it's not showing up on y'all's. If you download it, you can see it on your own. Mm -hmm. There we go. Magic. No. Nope. <laughs> I swear it's magic here. <laughs> I can see it. Yeah. Can you give me any clues why it won't give it like that on the picture? So, um, I have no idea. Yeah, I think it's fine. It's fine. It's yeah. fine this but, way. Yeah. Like on but, the bottom right, right before uh, the enlargement and zoom, I think the slideshow icon on the bottom right, um, like three buttons over from comments. Slideshow. Nope, but it's fine. The way it is. we're it's almost fine. really fancy. Okay, go Next ahead. Time Jane. you can be fancy. <laughs> so I did the PowerPoint to kind of make it easier for everyone to follow along. Um, so, oh, Jennifer, your fun toy is not working. Either. It's working on my computer, and I'm sharing my screen. <laughs> Um, maybe stop sharing. Yeah, stop sharing and reshare. That's a frequent happening. So the sharing of the screen is the only way y'all can see it because it's connected into my computer. It's no, I, I said stop sharing it. and then try to reshare it because uh, sometimes that happens and it just gets stuck. Okay, one more time. Like I have to share the screen. That's the only way it works. We had a, a meeting the other day uh, and you had to, every time you wanted to change a page, you had to get out and come back in. Oh, it looks like you guys also have it in board docs. Yeah. Yeah. We all have it's it. Just so it's really our fans want to no, see I it. That's right. It's, it's for the recording version. Right. I am so sorry. Okay. Can you um, tab through it? If I Jen, can. I can. Yeah, so just changes manually. So she'll tell you when to change it. Yep. No button. Yeah, just go like this and she'll yeah. <laughs> I'll get the laser pointer at it. <laughs> Oh, 
There we go. Rip, if you can come quick, take it out. So how do you really share it? So how do you really share it? Like okay, I think problem. Which one were you doing? Okay. Yeah, maybe try sharing your entire screen. You have to pick it. You have to pick what you're sharing. Even if you say entire screen. It's a day of technical. Is that you share your entire screen? Show. Right. Mm -hmm. Carolyn? I'm just thinking maybe going forward, we should probably have have Alex here. Yeah, I didn't realize he had left. Yeah. Yeah. Jay and I were coming. This will take priority. Yeah. So see, but to share the screen, I have to go back here, here. Well, you didn't want to go home tonight, did you? Again, <laughs> oh, come well, on, when I right. click it, and sure after this, it shares that. Yeah, and then and then switch, and then click full screen. Mm -hmm. Okay, Stevie did it. Stevie's yeah, brilliant. Stevie. Well, Stevie. Stevie. That was a final act of her right there. Okay. <laughs> click away. We're gonna we gotta renege on her resignation. Yeah, we're gonna yeah. take that back, Stevie. Sorry. All right. All right. So in the PowerPoint, we start with a overview of the process that we took mm -hmm. just for anyone that's watching that isn't aware. Then we can go through the department head 360 review, then the select board feedback, then the overall strengths and areas of focus for Carolyn moving forward. So we sent anonymous 360 reviews to 17 department heads and heads of boards that work closely with Carolyn in her day-to-day. -day. And we got 11 responses sent back, most of which were anonymous. Uh, department heads were told that if they had any staff who also had feedback, they could either print them their own copy or kind of compile it with their own if they wanted to. And then the select board was given their separate review form to fill out as well. Jane and I have met twice and we reviewed all the feedback, compiled it all together and figured out how to best present this information for all of you. So in case anyone's not sure what a 360 review is, it is when you're asking people's uh, coworkers and other managers and people that work underneath them for feedback as well. That way you get a more well-rounded view of the person in their day-to-day -day and might hit on some topics that you might not see in your, your dealings with Carolyn. So the slide shows the five different categories that the department heads were given, valuing behaviors, interdependent behaviors, communication, valuing diversity, and leadership behaviors. And on the left-hand side of the screen, it says which subcategory she was rated the highest in. And on the right-hand side, which one was the lowest? And I say lowest, but honestly, it was a scale of one to five, and the lowest score there is a 3.5, which is still pretty high. So it's a lot of them, it was very, very close. But overall, there was not a lot of disagreement. Out of the 11 responses, most of them were all saying the exact same thing, you know, one or two outliers on a few random bullet points, but overall it was pretty standard. Uh, and the main thing that was noted was that Carolyn treats everyone with fairness and respect. She respects confidentiality. She involves people in the decisions that involve their departments and that she's very supportive. There are also three open-ended questions that were asked. First, they were asked, what would they like the town administrator to stop doing? Uh, this question actually got the least amount of responses. These were actually the pretty much only five answers that people gave, um, mostly concerning not worrying about 
hurting people's feelings and just kind of letting people deal with the consequences of her decision making because everyone does trust her decision making. Um, The next question was, what behaviors and feedback does the town administrator provide that make your job more enjoyable and meaningful to you? And this got a lot of responses. Um, at least five different people wrote some version of that she cares about me as a person and checks in on how I'm doing. People mentioned how she asks about their kids, their pets, things that they've brought up to her that don't even involve work. Um, there's a lot of comments that she's direct and honest and is very accessible. She's always prompt. She always picks up the phone. Everyone feels like she is there for them at all times. The next was just any additional comments that might be helpful. Um, I really enjoyed some of these. I think some of them are very encouraging. There's a lot of keep up the good work. I enjoyed the keep going the way you are, third year is the charm. Uh, there's also a lot of comments about how Carolyn needs more support and that she needs an assistant, she needs more support, she always has a million things going on. It's very recognized in the building that she is being pulled in a lot of directions and has a lot of fires to put out. And she maybe doesn't always ask for as much help for herself as she's willing to get for everyone else. And the only comments that were about policy, there were two comments about flexibility with working from home. Um, so that is something that you know we might want to investigate further. And the select board review, all five of you were given a review. These were the nine categories that you were rating Carolyn on. And all five did respond, and we got responses from all of you. So I did the same thing with the different categories down the middle and the highest rated subcategory and the lowest on either side. Um, same as with the town, all of you were pretty much on the same page with each other. Uh, there were a lot of comments that were pretty repetitive between all of the reviews and uh, Carolyn's highest were really personal development and ethics, which across the board, everyone really felt that she was very strong at. And Communication seemed to be a big area for uh, focus moving forward and different ways all of you made comments about wanting to be more involved, wanting her to communicate more or in different ways. So you had a lot of categories that so had to go into two papers. But um, for ethics, I actually couldn't put anything as the lowest rated subcategory because out of the five subcategories in there, Overall, she was at a 4.75 out of five on all of them. So that was rated very highly. And you all made a lot of comments. And I think some of these are really interesting, really good for Carolyn to see. Um, the professionalism and willing to work with people and take responsibility came up a lot. Um, and there were also a lot of comments about wanting you all to be more involved earlier in budgetary decisions and not just being told things after the fact and make sure that you're aware of what's going on in the town in communication just about major initiatives that are going on, especially with kind of some of the bigger departments like you know police, fire, and DPW. So. So overall, between both the select board and the department heads, the overall strengths for Carolyn were her professionalism and her ethics. Hardworking, trustworthy, and putting the town's need first came up numerous times across both sets of reviews. And advocating and championing the staff. Um, everyone really acknowledges that she's working diligently on pay equity, workload equity, getting people the help they need and preparing the town and the different departments for the future for when people retire and for as the town grows. The areas of focus that we noted were communication with the select board involving you all sooner and on more topics, sharing more information on what's happening and sharing the background knowledge that she has and support for herself. Uh, Carolyn is very big on getting everyone else support that they need and telling people to go home after they've worked their hours and to not burn out and 
we need to make sure she knows it's not a sign of weakness to ask for that for herself as well and to delegate when possible and to do what's right for the town regardless of any hurt feelings or making sure that one department doesn't just get what they want. And then just a summary slide of everything that was on there. Jen, can I just say sure. the work that um, I love this format. I love how it was pulled together with the ratings, the high and the low, and the, and the comments coming in. I mean, I think I know. I think you worked with Jane, but um, you know, I I think this is kind of the best formatting, just in my opinion, that we've had since we've been doing these types of reviews. So thank you for thinking through all of that, just from a process standpoint. Any other comments or questions for Jen or for Carolyn? No, and I think it's a great job. Um, again, I've been through many. God knows I've been through many um, of these reviews <laughs> <laughs> here and there and everywhere. But um, this was probably the easiest. Probably I could have said more, but you know, what was said in the evaluation, you really didn't need to go into a whole bunch more. Uh, the administrator's job is the toughest one in the town. Uh, and I think every administrator that we've had or superintendent that we've had, it's a job where they want to do the job themselves and doesn't ask people for a lot of support and help um, because that's what they do. Um, but we're here. I don't ever want to micromanage you. That's not my job. Um, and I don't think that's any one of our job because that's why we hired you. Um, and anybody we put in a position as Jen or Jen, we did, you're there because we hired you because that's your job and that's what we expect you to do. So we appreciate everything that you do do. Thank you. I thought it was perfect because not everyone knows exactly what she does every day. And I think that she's involved in a lot more than really anyone imagines. So I really liked the format. I loved being able to give all the honest comments that I wanted. And I think it was so important to involve everybody that she sees every day. Yeah. And I think it was really interesting that there was a lot of repetition. I mean, there were, I went through and I was like, oh, nine of these comments are all saying the same thing, just in different people's voices. And yeah. so mm -hmm. people definitely were all on the same page. Do we want to vote to accept this performance evaluation? Um, I don't know if we, we need, need to, to do that. We, no, no. I don't think okay. so. we need to. Fine. Yeah. Okay. Well, well, thank I, you, town I, I just have, I just have, yeah. I just have one Good recommendation, job. though. I, I would assume that we would be doing evaluations. Um, it's fine that we did it now, but uh, it was brought to my attention by somebody else that I talked to, somebody else. But anyway, that it should be like goes with the uh, budget process. So that it should be, you know, on a July 1st to a June for, you know, June 30th type of thing that not in the middle of the year that it should be tied to monetary also um, so that we know where we stand. I'm not sure if, it, if we're doing it on contract uh, because of when you were hired, but I think, you know, on a fiscal type of thing that it should be done. You're correct. And we're catching up from COVID. Yeah. We this is the first one we've had. It's gotten it's done correct. for so Carolyn, just, so. I, I was just but thinking yes, that it should be on the other schedule. You're on, absolutely on correct. The fiscal area, yep. so that's that's fine. But we've gotten started. Absolutely, and we now have a plan, and yep. we can carry forward with it easily instead of having to figure out what's needed to be done for this. That's so. good. Thank you. Yep. So thank. I mean, I want to thank you. These, this, it was. You, I, you, you cannot. Not be nervous coming into a meeting like this and just wondering and like so take that to the gazette. <laughs> but also, you know, like 
like two weeks ago, right before the deadline of the three six. So I said, oh, I'm not going to get a good one after that conversation. <laughs> so, you know, you, you kind of worry about it. So, but it, it's definitely really encouraging. So it, it's um, way better than I thought it was going to be. Just because, you know, what are you hiding from us? <laughs> <laughs> you know, you, it's the things that you're trying to strive for, but you're not sure that it's going to get perceived that way. But this is showing me that. Yes, and and it is the support from everybody. Um, I you know some of them I would love more feedback as to how um, to increase communication, to be more specific about how you want things communicated to you, um, and then also you know hearing from the staff that not being supportive of remote. Um, work because that's not I'm not really quite sure where that came from I don't even know that I've had anybody come to me and ask me for it and I said no so I kind of I need to reach out and try to get some more feedback of where that's coming from because um, certainly there are times where I, de I definitely understand if someone's um, needs to has a deadline and can't be disturbed and if you're the only person in your department and you're also having to you know answer a lot of questions throughout the day there's a lot of value I think for certain things so I, I that will I will take that on to reach out to the staff to see you know where that might have gotten miscommunicated um but but it's you know I haven't really looked at it line line item by line item but if there's anything that did rate on the lower side to get more clarification from you from the select board of especially the communication because I did see that you wanted to hear more so I, I would love just your feedback in the future what would be more helpful and do, do you have all the the actual detailed reviews that we did i don't i don't i have them for her, but oh, we okay. wanted to do this yes. first tonight yeah. Yeah. That makes sense. so that might help yeah, yeah. she's the supposed to sign them so yeah. i guess she's going to get them yeah <laughs> yeah yeah so, so oh, i was just going to say i know the, the last sentence of mine i think is you know absolutely open to having a one-on-one -on -one if you choose oh good to, okay you know, so. yeah yeah, that would be great. Yeah, and I'd be more than happy to do that. There's there's a couple of things that I, I think I've talked to you in the past, and it came up numerous times on that review. You spend a lot of your time putting out fires, and you have to decide which fire needs to go. And you know, anybody that's in business knows what that's all about. The phone rings, this happens, that happens. I got to do this, I got to do this, and you drop that. And you know, that's where. Uh, if you could figure out what's really important and how to pass some of that stuff on, your life would be a whole lot easier. My my initial response to a question or a crisis is, is Hadley going to get in trouble or is someone going to get hurt? Mm -hmm. So those those always take priority. Yeah. So yeah. yeah, how far are you going to let it burn? Yeah, <laughs> <That's> true. <laughs> Very true. No, this this is really helpful, and Sir, Jennifer, this is just great. This presentation is really helpful, and I and I want uh, I definitely want the staff to see this. So I'll, yeah, I feel like it's nice we and can, easy. And yeah, powerful. that would be great. Send it out to whoever. But again, we're trying to tell her. You know, everybody wants to do the one on one. Everybody wants to have more communication, but that's time that she's having to give us that maybe not necessary and well she needs to just pick and choose what is necessary for us to know that is not going to be brought up at a select board meeting because every time you think about contacting five people or whatever that takes time out of the day that probably she has a lot more on her plate that she feels that she needs to get done than just unless you just want her to shoot off an email or whatever we can talk about how that communication goes, but to actually sit down with everybody every week and have that conversation, unless it's absolutely necessary, I'm not sure if it is. Yeah, I yeah. think no, so. Be kind yeah. of unwieldy. I think, I think yeah. just examples. Well, just, yeah. after you go through all the reviews, then if you know who said what, so if you got issues, just let us know, and we'll be more okay. than happy to talk yeah, to you about them yeah and hopefully it's not just just issues if we gave you a five on something you might want to know why we gave you a five on something yeah. too so yeah as far as i'm concerned i would have given you a five on everything but everybody tells me you can't get five and perfect so you got to throw <laughs> three doors in there so <laughs> well it's true <laughs> i mean i'm honest i don't have any any flies on me you know that so that's oh, right yeah. <laughs> thank you this was not a scary experience like every <laughs> There's some stuff that I didn't rate because and then I put in the comments like, well, I'm not sure what to put here because I don't see 
you in your daily work? Like there were some questions about, um, you know, for us about like how you handle like your own employees and people in the building. And I was like, well, I've heard nothing but positive stuff, but I can't really rate this because I don't really see her on a day-to-day basis to see all of her daily interactions. So hopefully I didn't skew any data with that one. Yeah, that's where the 360 helps. Yeah, Yeah. I I did the same thing because there are situations where I haven't dealt with you. So I just said, can't answer this. Mm -hmm. So we need to put an NA as an option. Yes, Mm -hmm. I'll do that next time. (laughs) Okay, perfect. All right, thank you. Thanks, Jen. All right, Jen. Moving along. Flag flying policy. Molly, you want to pick this up? Uh, Sure. So I know Jennifer put in some uh, examples from other municipalities. So um, I don't don't think the expectation was that we were gonna come up with a policy tonight, but just uh, that we brought this up before because for those of us who went to the Mass Municipal Conference, they actually hit this as a highlight for municipalities to address. Um, so basically the, the Commonwealth is encouraging all municipalities to have a flag flying policy, uh, primarily because the city of Boston, we're not Boston, but the city of Boston um, got involved in litigation that took uh, was taken all the way to the Supreme Court. So you can only imagine the legal fees involved um, in the municipality having to deal with something like that um, so they highlighted, you know, anybody can Google that and, and find out um, the outcome. But what it underscored was that uh, we live in a very expressive society um, and people uh, in a good way want to participate. They want their feelings to be known. Uh, but you need to be really careful about what is the, the voice of the, the local government versus you know uh, a group of individuals who may desire to have their voice heard. So um, tonight in board docs, there are examples of some um, from what some other municipalities have done to address the issue. So I was hoping that maybe we could take a look at that and everybody think about it. Um, and you know it, it, it adopt a, a policy. so, so I'd just like to back up a little more on the details of the case that we heard about at MMA was that they have a flagpole that they fly flags when people request and they had never not approved a request. Somebody said, I want to fly a flag and the flag went up for a certain period of time. Um, and then they flew a flag and someone objected to it. And that's where the issue came. And was this really a statement of what the town meant? Because it was a religious symbol. So then that's where the whole court case happened. So we need to figure out what we want to allow to fly on our flight pole. There's actually a law of, of separation of state and religion, you know. So, I mean, that goes with, but I, I, you know, anything saying if you, we're going to bring it up at the next or whatever, we're going to do it. Mm-hmm. I like outlined here in the, uh, in the articles, I did have a chance to review it. So, okay, Amy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I was going to say that I, what I really appreciated about, um, cause I did look at all these and I really appreciated one that there was an application process to it. Um, because I think sometimes people think, well, yes, we're the voice of the town, but um, we're, you know, we're here for the town. Um, so I, I like the application process and I like that there was finality in them. Um, Cause I think, you know, all the negative comments that I've received in regards to why this came up for us in the first place was we only did it because we were hopping on the bandwagon and you know acting like we're just a bunch of like woke people. Um, so I think moving forward, something that I really do want to see is a finite date. Um, if we did decide to do something that it was only, I mean, I think in Boston it was like 24 hours. Um, in other ones, there was you know a specific finite dates for the removal of it. Um, 
And I think that's another issue that we're kind of seeing right now. <clears throat> All right, so we should uh, put this back on the agenda, have time to read it, review it, and figure out what we're going to do. So March oh, 1st. Is yep. that, is that, are those enough for you to see, or do y'all want more towns? Belcher Town has one that they're still working on in Boston. The one that's on there for Boston is actually not the um, most current one because they're still actually working on it. Yeah. So I put the one they had. I would like to see what smaller towns are doing. I mean, cities <laughs> are, are really different than Hadley. Right. Okay. I can, yeah. I can yes, try to yes find Yes and no, Jane. Well, legal implications are the same. Right. right. People are people, whether there's millions or thousands. You still have differences of opinion, and that's really what matters. I can I can try to find some smaller towns too. Okay. Um, I think Deer Dighton's pretty small for sure. Dighton, yes, and their <laughs> bylaw is like this. It's a bylaw, so tiny. <laughs> I was like, best one ever. <laughs> there we go. Yeah, I don't think we need to have a huge amount of reading to do on this, but just general ideas so that we can then go forward and make our ideas. Okay. All right. All right. All right, Sue Oppenheimer. Hi, my name is Sue Oppenheimer. I've lived at Hadley Housing Authority for years, and I've worked to create a healthier, more functional, less oppressive place to live for both the elderly and disabled in a broken housing system. I gave you a packet at one time a week or so ago. I would ask you if you would please rewatch January 31st, 2023, a Hadley Housing Authority board meeting, if you would. I'm here tonight to ask the Town of Hadley Select Board to recall tenant board member Reese Freed. I would like maybe about four minutes or so and hit the highlights of what I think is why I came to this conclusion. Our tenant representative, Reese Freed, was chosen by the Town of Hadley Select Board. <laughs> this was Reese's very first board meeting was on September 27, 2022. From the very beginning, she has exhibited herself to be aggressive, controlling, and lacking empathy. I feel that Reese is not at all tenant-oriented, and her allegiance appears to be focused on the business of management. Bare bones is good enough for the tenants appears to be her clarion cry. Three-minute public speak, enough, bam, time's up. It's not in our bylaws. Tenants have all, you know, in, in uh, board meetings have basically been able to speak a certain amount of time without any time restriction. No vent, this is a quote, no venting, complaining, expressing of grievances. Restated that the board should direct tenants to file grievances, even though she is well aware that tenants' grievances are practically never heard and we do not even have a legitimate grievance board. Reese does not advocate for tenants who are shut out of board meetings when they are 100% virtual. Some tenants are completely illiterate as far as computers go. Some tenants lack smartphones and computers. When Amherst Housing took us over, both the old computers and the Wi-Fi service in our community room disappeared. Reese reply, just get any old desktop from, for the tenants. She does not advocate for tenants who request in writing to be put on the board agenda and do not get on the agenda. If a tenant requests a reasonable accommodation, such as a handicap shower, her response was, a reasonable accommodation for a tenant just needs to be reasonable and does not have to be as requested by a tenant. On more than one occasion, Reese cut down the Golden Court Tenants Association, even though she was not even living there when the tenants organization was active. I find Reese to be very litigious. She stated on a November 22nd, 2022 board meeting 
a board member can file a 121B, a letter of complaint and misconduct, misconduct and dereliction of duty against another board member. Well, she did just that. She filed open meeting law violations against two of her fellow board members while only serving on her board for three months. At this same November 22nd, 2022 meeting, restated, if the town of Hadley Select Board interferes with the HHA and Amherst Housing Authority business, this will be actionable and state law prohibits this interference. Reese attended a town of Hadley Select Board meeting with management without even discussing this with other board members. They had no idea that she was attending this meeting. If tenants act out at meetings, she yells, kick them out, call the police. December 20th, 2022 board meeting, Reese did not defend her, her fellow board members when management falsely stated that two board members refused to participate in today's board meeting due to misinformation. The board members had valid reasons why they chose not to attend this meeting. She stated, the board must do their job. It is unacceptable. Once again, no allegiance to her fellow board members. January 31st meeting, which is the one I hope that you peek at, Reese told a board member that he did not have the capacity to chair a Hadley Housing Board meeting because one of the board members was giving up the chairmanship, whoever was elected. I, I don't think I'm allowed to use names, but the board member that was chosen as the new chair, she said to him, you don't have the capacity to be the chair. I don't see you as a viable chairman. I wish Richie, oops, sorry. I wish, I wish the chair to continue. When does your term end, she said, to this man who is now our new chairman. It's inappropriate for you unless you make a commitment to run again. She brought up bogus tenant survey that she passed around to tenants door to door. She, took, she chose to exclude some tenants. She distorted facts in order to get tenants to sign, such as if tenants lose Amherst housing, you will lose your services. Director Mary Billion will lose her job if, if it is not continuously mattered by, managed by Amherst Housing. She did not discuss the survey with her fellow board members, and she acted as an agent for the Hadley Housing Authority management. I am putting myself in jeopardy tonight, I feel, um, because vocal, knowledgeable, involved tenants in all the years I lived here, at Golden Court have been the ones that are always targeted by management. Many tenants live there. They have no idea what's going on. Many tenants live in fear. Notices to quit or threats of notices to quit are handed out like M&Ms. So that's all I have to say tonight. So please consider what I asked, which is um, to recall tenant board member Reese Freed. Thanks so much. Bye-bye. Thank you. <laughs> Comments, discussion? Is is there a process for this, sir? So there actually is. I um the um division of housing and community public housing. H C D C. Yep. Okay. Um MGL section 121 B six. Um a select board can remove a member appointed elected by the municipality, including tenant board members who are appointed, but there has to be a formal hearing and an opportunity for the board member to defend themselves. Section six, the mayor or city council or board of selectmen may make or receive written charges against and the mayor with the approval of the city council or the board of selectmen as the case may be, may accept the resignation of any member of a housing authority or redevelopment authority appointed or elected by such city or town, or may after the hearing, remove any such member because of inefficiency, neglect of duty or misconduct in office provided that such member shall have been given not less than 14 days before the set date for such hearing, a copy in writing of the charges against him 
and written notice of the date and place of hearing to be held thereon, and at the hearing shall have been given the opportunity to be represented by counsel and to be heard in his defense. The mayor and city council or board of selectmen may also make or receive written charges against any member of the housing or redevelopment authority in such city or town appointed by the department and refer the same to the department which may proceed in the same manner as the mayor and city council. Pending final action upon any such charges, the officer or officers having the power to remove such member may temporarily suspend him, provided that they shall immediately reinstate him in office if they find such charges have not been substantiated, and may appoint a person to perform the duties of such suspended member until he is reinstated or until he is removed and his successor is qualified. In cases of any such removal, the removing authority shall forthwith deliver to the clerk of the city or town attested copies of such charges and of its findings thereon, and the clerk shall cause the same to be filed with the certificate and duplicate certificate required to be filed with the department and the state secretary under section five. So it says we can have a public hearing in which all of the charges against the uh, board member that we appointed as tenant representative can be heard and she has the opportunity to come and bring counsel and anyone she wishes to defend her. Do we want to take that kind of action? I don't think we want to do it just yet. I have a question for Sue. Is this just your opinion or are there other people in Golden Court that will agree with your assessment? My, my version. I understand it's your version, but and there's three or four, there's only three or four of us that have ever been involved in going to board meetings in, in the Golden Court. We had a tenant's organization at one time, but that, that, um, that ended a while back. So that, that right. <clears throat> But okay. coming from board members' mouths too, the one you know they're the ones that um, have to deal with her at the board meetings, and we, I've never um, been so horrified of what I see, the lack of respect uh, to her uh, to her fellow board members is just something that I've never seen the likes of, and I think it's horrifying. Okay, and all the, all these meetings are recorded, correct? Yes. Well, I don't know how far back, maybe five months we've been recorded. Okay, but she's only been... And she's been on since, uh, I think, four, four or five months now. Yeah, yeah. that's when we appointed okay. her. Okay. Really want to watch. So uh, I, would, I would recommend that we at least watch the meetings right. and get a feel for if we agree right. with this or not. I'd and like to hear from take the it other elected... Other board members. Other board members, too. Mm -hmm. We have one here tonight. Do we want to there's invite four them other, all in? There's three others. That's what I'm saying. Do we want to invite them all in? To yeah. Get one yes. time? Okay. I believe we should. All right. Yeah, definitely. This, this is an open hearing and they yes. should participate for us to make any mm -hmm. real determination on what we yeah. should do. So I just want to clarify, um, are you asking for the hearing is very, is formal, uh, but you want to hear more information I just want to uh, make sure we follow the right process as right. far as what can be said outside of the hearing. If well, I she think she, if she can't be here. But I think there's a missing link here that people can file complaints whenever, right? You could file a complaint, yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I mean, we but, could. I mean, but she needs essentially couldn't. Go ahead. I, I, I there's a, a in my brain here. It's thinking there's a missing link. Of uh, of the protocol of of legally uh, notifying the person of what's happening, and I think we need to do that. I, I would like counsel to chime in on this, please. I certainly agree with that. Yeah, I do. Before we, yeah. Yeah. you know, let's yeah. let's have them tell us what we need I have to the do. Email started. Right. Yeah, and but then maybe at the next at our yeah. next meeting. We can decide we can how to decide move forward. If we Correct. Right. To hold that. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. I mean, with all due respect, and anybody can file a complaint if they want to. So we don't want to just start saying, yeah, okay, you've got a complaint. We're going to have a hearing, blah, blah, blah. We need to do our homework 
And then if we feel that your uh, concerns are legitimate, then we will act. Sure. Yeah. Sounds just, great. Just because there's a process. Right. Thank you. Legally, you know, we're bound. Yes. All right. All right. Thanks, sir. Is All that right. your water, Sue? Yes, it is. <laughs> All right. Green community application is not quite ready. They will be here March 1st. And this time it will be ready to go. And hopefully we will soon be the recipients of the ability to get lots of energy grants. All right. Surveyor services disclosure. Mr. Iser. Yes. I am on the DPW facilities uh, feasibility committee. And we decided at our last meeting that we need a survey of the property that the existing DPW building is on. And my company has done extensive work in the area and I figured I could do the work for less money than anybody else. And the issue of conflict of interest came up. So I called the ethics commission and they told me as long as I filled out the appropriate paperwork that I could do the work so I have the paperwork filled out. I will file it with the town clerk tomorrow. So just to make people in the town aware of what's going on. Super. Thank you. Well done. <laughs> All right. Thanks. <laughs> Carolyn, are there any highlights you want to hit for us? Sure. I actually do have a written one if you okay. want to take a look at Perfect. it. But one of the reasons is because there's a couple dates that I just want to make sure you have. Uh, the next select board meeting is on the 22nd. Which and, is next Wednesday. Yep. So that will be a preliminary budget presentation with the finance committee. When did that get posted? When did we decide that? After we left the meeting last week. <laughs> <laughs> that was an executive session you decided? No, 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 no. 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 We, we, we have to, in budget time, budget cycle, sometimes we have to sneak in a meeting to get things done, to get that warrant ready. Yeah, but that wasn't on there before you went into executive session. I stayed until executive session went into session and there was no to, discussion two weeks, on the, two weeks ago. Yeah, I, I think we probably did it afterwards. It, it was afterwards because it was. No, I don't mean after they didn't. I don't this know, wasn't a decision. Mean, this is a chair's decision yeah, speaking with right. me and Linda we, that um, we need to get we, this we, in we, here. We yes, this was not discussed. Have in our, com, which comes up next after this under goals. Um, we talked about needing department meetings and more information on finance earlier on in the process. Early in the process, so, so I requested a finance. It's committee. only going to be that, as well as uh, the finance team, and uh, with the assistant, assistance of Susan Glowatsky, has worked on a water and sewer rate recommendations that we're going to fine tune this this week and next week. But we'll have those recommendations ready for you to look at. But we will have to do a water and sewer rate hearing. As, as the commissioners right. um, so it's on March 1st. For us. So informational is on the 22nd, March 1st would be the hearing. And we have to, uh, we had to, we have to have two weeks notice for that. Just added to my calendar. Sorry. Can I change my review? <laughs> <laughs> um, That's part of what we want, remember? Exactly. Yeah. So that should yeah. be a good thing. Okay, uh, all right. So there's just a couple agreements that are uploaded. Uh, I've attached the agreement between the town of Hadley and Collins Center um, for the HR um, classification compensation and succession plan. I wanted you to have a copy of that. Uh, the Powers and Sullivan Auditor Service Contract, who Linda has been working with to in, do all of our auditing services for the uh, June 30th of 23, 24, and 25. That's also that contract's there. And as we, the last meeting, you heard from CEI, the engineers, about the administrative consent order for um, Algonquin Drive. Uh, we have engaged um, engineering services from them, but the whole scope of work is in that, which is what you didn't have last week. Uh, the Hawk Signal Public Forum, you should be in those uh, correspondence working with Mass DOT. DOT. They would like a pre preliminary planning meeting for that hearing uh, so that they propose that. So we'll continue to work out what when that date will be for the preliminary meeting. And then I will have a draft of the ATM warrant, annual town meeting warrant for the March 1st select board meeting. I'm just still waiting for a couple placeholders for some of those articles. And the accounting contract, I'm gonna update this right now is uh, 
you know that Melanson was bought out by Markham. Mm -hmm. And so I met and invited Linda to speak with Tanya Campbell from now Markham to discuss next year's contract because we still didn't have the, the funding for that. So at, the, at when I was writing this, I did not have a response yet from them. And I do have one, but I do, I'm going to have another opportunity to talk with her because I think we could sharpen the pencil a little bit. It came a little higher than I had thought. So I'll have more updates. With and that. we're still willing to look at an, um, a non-in-house accountant. An in-house accountant, not a non- This would be an in-house accountant. No, this Melanson right here, right. that's that's that is uh who we contract out with. Right. So you're saying an in-house, yes. Yeah, so I'm always looking. I'm always looking. Okay. So about the the town meeting warrant that you say you'll have for March first. Yeah. But I, I see I am still waiting for placeholders. Don't worry if those placeholders aren't full. Just get us what you've got so that we can look at it and we understand. You know, in, in part of the review, you don't need to be perfect on this, right? Get it. And we can start looking at it and we can offer feedback if appropriate. And we can we can help. Yeah. Jessica also reminded me today when I talked to her about the committees that March 31st is the drop dead date for saying anything that has to be on the annual ballot. So if any of our town meeting questions are going to require an override vote, anything that's asking for money that's two thirds or anything else that we think of, she needs to know by March 31st. So clarification, not for two thirds, you mean if it's over two and a half, is that what you're asking? Any Anything that needs a vote, a ballot box ballot vote. vote. A ballot box, I don't foresee anything. But just keep yeah, in mind. I would, yeah. Can I just ask um, about the last report? I think you mentioned the um, the dike. Yes. Oh, it was that sub zero day, so we didn't do the visit. So, that's okay. so thank you, thank happen. you. That's this Friday. It's okay. been rescheduled. Yeah, it was. I think what was ten below that day. Yeah. I think that was, I was a good really choice. glad they canceled. That was a good choice. <laughs> yeah, we went and it was very windy. We, I would not want anyone going over the dike. Yeah. Thank you. And I hope the minutes reflect the fact that. My esteemed colleague, Mr. Eiser, gave you permission not to be perfect. <laughs> <laughs> I'll remember that. <laughs> All right. Um, our goals. There is a list here of things that the select board have said has said that we are interested in pursuing. And it's a fairly large list. So I would like to prioritize them somehow. Now we're already um done the board and committee recommendations. So that's can come right off of there. Um, joint board meetings, we've added the um, finance committee to, to meet with us. Are there other things that we should be putting on this? Yeah, I'd said some on communications and I apologize and I remembered about three o'clock this afternoon that you asked me to draft something. <laughs> so I did send something around via email. Um, today I didn't just see my email yeah yeah so just for for people to look at that was the communication ones and I I bulleted out just some ideas for discussion so I was wondering if maybe it would be all right if I met with um Carolyn talk that through with her and then bring that back yeah that just, works for me if that's okay and like joint joint meetings I threw under there um, okay too so all right entertainment licenses we were talking about um, the broader scope of entertainment right. licenses. How do we want to proceed with that? So tomorrow morning, Jennifer, Dee Dee, and myself are going to take a look at what we have currently and see how we can try to improve upon it. And then we can bring that back here and talk about it. Excellent. Um, housing. So on that one, so um, the Housing and Economic Development Committee, uh, we're meeting tomorrow night, and we went on hiatus while the housing production plan was being developed. So we're just kind of regrouping, and part of the agenda is to talk about possible next steps. Um, 
and uh, Bill Dwyer's on that committee. So that's kind of the tie between the select board and the and the planning board as well. So because he's great about saying this is what we're already doing or this is what we're talking about. Uh, and then I'm thinking that uh, depending on the outcome of that meeting or maybe the next couple of meetings will in all likelihood want to come back here to say this is what we're talking about, this is what we're thinking, and make sure that uh, select board and, and I'm assuming planning board will want to say, yeah, but keep going or whatever. Okay. Enhanced revenue, always a good topic. How are we going to get more money? Where do we even, is that, will we do that with finance committee? Will we do that with, where does you can, that? You can start in a small working group. There's ways. You might have to spend money to get some, but I think there's, you, I think Hadley has very good opportunities to increase revenue. And so what does the select board need to do to encourage that to happen? Part of it does fall under housing and economic development, right? Because if okay. we're, I mean, there's, there's the, you know, when you think about your bottom line, right? You tax, or I should say top line, um, you can increase. Amy, if you turn your camera off, you'll be able to, we'll be able to hear you better. Although it looks like she might be gone. No, no she's, she's still, still there. She's still there. She's still there. So just the, you know, what we're talking about is, you know, like we do the fee review, so we already have revenue and then, uh, or we're talking about rates, right? Water and sewer rates. So that's, right. those are existing revenue streams. Mm -hmm. Then there are possible new revenue streams. Um, and then you can also look at increasing the tax base itself. So you're not increasing necessarily individual property taxes, but you're, in, you're bringing more taxable stock into the town. So that piece of it, I think, that's part of our focus mm -hmm. on the housing and economic development. And then, like Carolyn said, maybe a work for handling. And in the you past, know, with we, the building inspector being involved with that too, and what's going on with building, and then planning is in with building, and so I mean, it's all all connected. Yep. And you'll hear about some of that with the budget presentation there. And we also had talked not recently, but I know a couple of years ago, there was conversation about hiring a um, economic planner or a, how, I don't know what the technical term is, but someone who was gonna look at how the town could develop um, and improve the economics, somebody in a planning position who had that kind of information. Well, you do have the Pioneer Planning Commission that does work with us on on that also. So, I mean, it's kind of money spent on where we want to spend the money on another position. You know, you're talking about an accounting person in-house, that's money. Now you want an economic development person in-house. I mean, I mean, you got to really we gotta look at prioritize and right. see what, exactly. what we really want in-house. And mm -hmm. preferably it would be cheaper having somebody accounting and then hiring a firm from outside. Um, but they're not always a lot out there. It's always finding someone who wants to work seems to be an issue for everybody. Well, these days. Nobody wants to work nowadays. That's pathetic. But yeah, I mean, Jane, you know, I, I agree. It's all tied together, right? Right. And, and we may get to a point where, I mean, there's only so much you can do again with these volunteer committees and having somebody who eats, sleeps, and breathes this stuff all day long. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, again, that. We're just going to try to keep moving things forward as best we can, but right. ultimately the town can certainly benefit. You know. And I, I think, you know, to increase the tax base, we're pretty much limited to Route 9, uh, or at least in the business districts. And Route 9 is the most intense business district we have. And there's got to figure out how to do some infill or something like that so that we can bring stuff in that will help to raise our tax base and not necessarily encourage people with children to come in and i don't mean to be rude but that we know how that all works well the, po uh, population is down i mean if, right if, we if, have room yeah, in the schools if you if you schools. look i mean if you if you saw what um dr mckenzie put together for 
uh, what our school choice kids are, what we're sourcing out, what we're bringing in, and what we have. I mean, you can see it. I mean, Hatfield Spacing, they had a big article in the paper about uh, down in enrollment. I mean, people aren't having kids like they used to. So everybody is feeling the crunch on numbers going down, and yet you still have to provide a, a you know, a great education to bring kids in to have school choice, um, which is our revenue also for what the school brings in. And basically they've really been good partners with us on uh, sharing their monies with us. So, yes. I mean. And I talked to uh, Dr. McKenzie a couple of days ago and one in four students mm -hmm. is non-Hadley. Really? Yeah. 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 Um, yeah. And that's nice for Hadley's budget because they bring in more, mm -hmm. so. Mm -hmm. That's but I think the point Randy raises is the, and again, this is where data is really important too, is that there, there certainly is a consequence to increasing housing in Hadley, you know, pressure on infrastructure, whatever, whether it's park and rec or whether it's, uh, it's police and fire or, you know, mm -hmm. water and sewer. So all of that, then that's where actual planners <laughs> are far better suited to have those conversations than we are but at least we can we can try to keep teeing it up right and we can keep well yeah. that's one of the things though that the planning board has asked for for you know past several years is they would like a planner to come in and us hiring a, somebody for planning and it's, it, that would benefit them because as we talked about with their longevity that they have on the board they're not going to be there forever exactly. either and they have the the most wealth of knowledge in this town of what goes on and what comes in and what goes out. So, mm -hmm. you know, you know, they're our seed actually. Right. Yeah. Okay. All right. Move it. Uh, classification update. I understand that's being worked on. The classification compensation. Yes. Is, we're, it's, yes. we're signing the contract. Okay. Um, I finally got the contract from that. So. All right. So that's continuing. Um, the Russell School Plan we have heard and it's coming back to us when we meet with the Municipal Building Committee and the Russell School to talk about what they're doing. And we have asked them when they presented to us to make a preparation so that the town has the choice of a vote at the town meeting at the warrant for the CPA money. And they're going forward with looking at that. And employee handbook. But I, there's one thing I didn't yeah, like about that Russell School survey is that they took more into consideration of people that don't live here in Hadley. And the percentage that they projected from in-house was not as great as what was projected from people that don't live here. Right. And I didn't like that. Yeah, I hear what you're saying, but town meetings- are And make people the in town decisions. didn't like it either. Maybe they didn't participate, yes. Mm -hmm. And that's their own fault, but- mm -hmm. I'm certainly not going to make a decision on Russell School based on what people traveling on Route 9 are saying to us. I'm sorry, that's not going to happen. I hear you. And I think that, that as what Randy just said, the town meeting is going to be given a choice to vote what to do, and they will be presented with the And that's not even good enough either, because there's always only 100, 140 people out of 5,000 that come to town meeting. Well, And I don't think that's... Well, it, that's this, right either. Yeah, this might be different, though, Joyce, because there's a lot of money on the line and that yeah. typically will bring people out. But you're right. There's never enough to uh, to justify the vote usually. Right. Ballot item. Say that again, Amy. Can you put it as the ballot item? She should do the charter spectrum survey for sure. <laughs> <laughs> um, the um, it will just it will be a town no, meeting um, ballot survey. But we've already done the survey, and now we're we're trying to keep moving with this. And so they have done the survey, and the next step is to take it to town meeting and see if they will approve CPA money to do what they would like to do. And the town will either say yes or no. And then if the town says yes, then that's one direction. And if the town says no, the select board needs to say, as Joyce would say, what's going on next? Because the town has said, no, we don't want to 
if the town says no, then we have to be ready to say, this is what has to happen. But I, I so just the point that Amy was making, if somebody on town meeting floor, which isn't going to happen until May 3rd, 3rd wanted to. No, I was gonna say spring ballot. Right, Amy, but in order to get it on the ballot, I was just gonna go back to, it sounded like Jessica was saying that anything that was gonna, going to go on the ballot would have to be decided by March 31st. Yes. So, yeah, <laughs> that would have to happen before we, there was even any conversation at town meeting, just from a timing standpoint. But we could make that decision and put it on the ballot for voting. What would we? Are ask? you talking about a not a non-binding non question? Yes. Yeah. yes. So, so you would have those two votes at the same town meeting. You could have this then support yes, the CPA or no CPA, and you could have an opposite vote with a non-binding question. So it's a little yeah. And CPA hasn't voted on this yet. Right. right. And the, and the discussion will come up during the CPA article. I right. think you will solve both prob both uh, I don't it's want to say problems. Problems. both uh questions in that that one yeah. article. Yeah. I, but I think Amy's point is and Joyce's point is that's a town meeting and we're lucky the biggest town meeting I've ever seen was either with the fire station in the elementary school or the new library and senior center when we were lucky if we had Close. 600 people. Right. Close. But I think the CPA article will bring that. You it's almost the same thing. You're almost du duplicating the question. Well, if, they, think, if they support to fund CPA, that, that the voters are voting to support the, the Russell School. Exactly. So I don't think you need that non-binding question. It's going to get answered on how that vote goes. Right. And right. that's on the 27 CPA? Yes, I think so. Okay. It's okay. soon. All right. Uh, and the last thing is the employee handbook, which is being worked on. Is that correct? It's going to, it's Jennifer, uh, I think, sent it to Labor Council today. Excellent. All right. Uh, announcements. Okay. So, unfortunately, tonight I have three um, passings. I have Anthony. Krzastovic, he was a, a former Hadley uh, resident. Uh, he was from Chicopee as he passed, but he was originally from Hadley. Um, we have Margaret Kelsch, uh, whose son Michael and uh, daughter-in-law Heather live here in town with grandson and granddaughter. Um, she loved watching Robert at church serve and play his trumpet. So, you know, she was quite a uh, advocate for her grandchildren. Uh, Tim Barstow passed away. He was the owner of Cedar Reach Farm, horse farm on Lawrence Plain Road. Um, had many children come in and out of there for a number of years, teaching them how to ride and um, have fun on the ranch, you know, so he was good at that. I spent 12 uh, years riding there. Pardon? I you... spent 12 years riding there. There you go, perfect. Uh, and he he leaves behind Karen Regish, who they have been together for 32 years. So um, our condolences to everyone's family from the select board. That's all I have. Anyone else? Do you want to no, say about your... I have a couple of things. One is um, to remind people to um, that annual elections for the town of Hadley and public offices will take place and you need to take out papers at the town clerk's office. There's a list of positions that are up this year on the town website. And those papers need to be taken out and filed by mid-March. Well, maybe the 20th of March, something like that. Also, the senior center is going to have a fundraiser, a roast beef dinner to go, which is being uh, prepared by famous cooks at the Legion. Tickets are available either at Town Hall or at the Senior Center. When is this happening? Uh, this is March 19th, and it's $25 for a, basically a pound of roast beef, baked potato, salad, and dessert. Best food ever. Really? Meat and potatoes. <laughs> Gonna have a tater. <laughs> Uh, anything else? 
May I have a motion to adjourn? So, so moved. moved. Second. Roll call, roll call vote. vote. Roll call vote. Chunkaloo? Yes. Keegan? Yes. Devin Smith? Yes. Parsons? Yes. Iser? Yes. Thank you. Thank you all. Good night, Good night, night Amy. Good night, Amy. Bye.